In this video, we're going to discuss bond polarity and dipole moments. So in the previous video, we talked about polar covalent bonds and how they result from this unequal sharing of electrons that results in one end of the bond having a partial negative charge and one end of the bond having a partial positive charge. And so the degree of how polar that covalent bond is, that's what we call polarity. And every, depending on the electronegativity of the bond of the atoms that are involved in the bond will result in different degrees of polarity for that polar covalent bond. So let's look at an example to, to illustrate this concept. So uh, this question says ranks, rank these bonds in order of increasing polarity. So we got HH, we got HF, we got HO, CLO and SO, SH, CLH and SH. Right. So we got a bunch of different bonds that involve hydrogen and another atom. Right. So we want to rank these in order of increasing polarity. Right. And I, I had our, I put our Pauling electronegativity scale here just to help uh, with determining this uh, polarity uh, for each bond. So keep in mind that a, a bond, the more polar a bond is, uh, the greater the difference in the electronegativity between the two atoms. If that difference is really, really large, then you get an ionic bond. Um, and if there's a slight difference, then you get that polar covalent bond. So just looking at these, uh, these bonds, one thing that we know for sure is that the lowest, most nonpolar bond here is going to be HH, right? So we can put that first. And we know that everything else uh, after this would be an increase in polarity, right? So, um, and we also know that HF is going to be the largest one, right? Since we know that fluorine is the most electronegative atom on the periodic table, it's going to love to grab electron pairs. So that's going to be the, the one that'll have the highest polarity. We know that HH will have the smallest. And so really, as far as ranking these guys, it's really just um, trying to make sense of these other three, OH, CLH, and SH, right? Well, following the trend, we know that as we go up the periodic table, the uh, polarity, the electronegativity is going to increase. So we know that sulfur and chlorine, the CLH and SH, should be the next highest in polarity, with SH being the least polar since we also increase um, going to the right of the periodic table. So next should be SH. And greater than that in polarity should be CLH. Then now we can go to the first row, right? We got OH and FH. So greater than CLH would be OH. And then obviously the most polar would be the fluorine hydrogen bond, right? So basically if you take the difference in the electronegativity here, right? For HH, it'll be about zero. For SH, we take two points, what is that? 2.6 minus 2.2. So that'll be 0 0.4 as the electronegativity difference there. If we take Cl and, and hydrogen, so you got 3 point, about 3.2 minus uh, 2.2, so that'll be one. And uh, for OH, right, we got uh, 3.4 minus 2.2, right? So it's gonna be 1.2 as the difference. And then for FH, that's basically four minus 2.2. And so we get a difference of about 1.8, right? So you can see that this is increasing in polarity, right? So this is an increasing polarity. So what does that mean? Well, that means that for HH, right, those, those electrons are going to be shared exactly equally versus for FH, there's going to be a large, uh, there's going to be a, a, a large disparity between the sharing of those electrons and it's going to favor that fluorine atom. And so it's going to be the most polar bond here. And the HH bond is going to be nonpolar. Now, the way that we denote or recognize this charge disparity in chemistry is with something called a dipole moment. Right now, basically, the whole idea here is that um, since you create this charge disparity, you create what's known as a dipole, right? Uh, two opposite poles on the same object, or in this case, bond, right? So a dipole moment in chemistry um, is going to be, you know, just an acknowledgement of that charge disparity in the bond. So, for example, let's take HF, right? So we have HF. 
right? What we usually do to denote the dipole moment is draw a little arrow that points towards the negative end of the dipole. So uh, we know that for HF, it's going to have this partial negative on the fluorine, partial positive on the hydrogen. So basically, we draw this little arrow where the arrow points towards the, the negative end of the dipole, right? So this is the dipole moment. HF is going to have a dipole moment that will point towards the fluorine atom. Now, at this point, we've done a lot of easy examples where there's only two atoms involved, right? Where you've got, you know, just two atoms that are involved. One's going to have the, the lion's share of the um, electrons. And so the dipole will point towards that end. But what happens when you have more than one bond? Well, you'll have to make an, uh, you know, an educated determination as far as which point where the dipole is going to point, right? So let's take water, for example. So if we take water, water has the following structure. If we look at the electronegativity values, we know that both of these bonds are going to be polar, right? Both of these OH bonds are going to be polar with a negative end pointing towards the oxygen. So the way that we can denote this, we have a partial positive on both hydrogens, right? And then I'll put a partial two negative on the oxygen. That means that there's, you know, two partial positive charges. So to balance this out, we're going to have a partial two negative charge on the oxygen. Now the question is, which direction does the dipole moment point, right? We know that this is going to have a dipole moment since it's going to be a charge imbalance, right? There's going to be an unequal sharing of electrons here. So we're going to put the dipole pointing from the positive end of the molecule, right, where both hydrogens are, to the negative end where the oxygen is, right? So it would have a dipole moment that would point towards this negative end of the molecule. Let's look at another example. Let's look at CO2. So if we look at carbon dioxide, so carbon dioxide has the following structure. Right. And we'll explain later why they have these double bonds. But just um, just humor me here for a second. So this is the, the structure for CO2. Now, we do have charge disparity here. Right. Oxygen is going to be more electronegative than carbon. So each of these bonds are going to be polar. Right. So this will be a partial negative on both oxygens. And we'll put a partial two positive on the carbon. However, for this example, because of the, the structure of CO2, the CO2 molecule actually does not have a total dipole moment. Each bond is polar, right? So you'll have a dipole pointing from the carbon to the oxygen here, and you'll have a dipole pointing from the carbon to the oxygen there. But since they're both, both dipoles are pointing in opposite directions, these dipoles are actually going to cancel out. And so we say that there's no net dipole for this molecule, right? Because they both point in opposite directions, right? So like, think about it, right? Like with water, these are both pointing in the same direction. And so you're going to have a net dipole going in that direction. But when you have two dipoles that point in opposite directions, they're going to cancel out and that's going to result in no net dipole for the molecule. So this is going to depend on the orientation of your molecule, the structure, the geometric structure of your molecule. Um, but you should be able to look at um, a structure or a particular bond, determine whether it's polar or not, and whether a molecule will have a net dipole moment. So the plots that I'm showing you here are what's known as electrostatic potential plots. So these are electrostatic potentials. And basically what it is is a distribution of electrons. So think about this as the distribution of electron clouds around the atoms, right? And so what you're seeing here, you're seeing blue in regions where there's less electron density, right? Where there's less of an electron cloud. And where it's red or orange is where there's more electron density. So these are the two examples that we just looked at, right? H2O and CO2. You can see that for CO2, 
very little electron density on the carbon atom, right? So that's where we have that that delta two plus, right? And then this these are the negative regions, right? Where you start to see more color. Same thing here for water, right? This part's blue, so very little electron density on those hydrogen atoms. And then you have a large red part where you have a lot of the negative charge, a lot of the electron density sitting at that oxygen atom. So this gives you a good understanding of the distribution of electrons in atoms and molecules and how polarity affects these, um, these chemical bonds.